Well, we're just going to take Jack off <laughs> to, to... Where's my son? Get my son back here, immediately! T. Dan Smith. Because all this... L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, I need more to do with it. <laughs> I was just thinking, you've certainly got me into some weird places in our lives together. I mean, I remember we were on holiday in Barbados, because it was a struggle with the school fees, we couldn't really go anywhere really nice. Oh, well, that's a very, um, <laughs> the struggle is real, first world problems. Yeah. Exactly. We could only afford to go to Barbados. Yes. I mean, I bet a lot of people watching this, the little violins are out. Yeah, yeah it was a struggle. Anyway, we went for a walk in the harbour and there was this great big white yacht, huge, you know, not, not yacht with the masts, but you know, like a boat yacht. Yeah, super yacht. Yeah, super, it's sort of thing that man, that dress shop man would have, you know, Sir, Sir Watson. Sir Philip Green. Sir Philip Green. The dress shop man. Yeah. Well, not just dress shop man, but then watch this space, but anyway. Um, so, you wanted to go on the boat. Because I liked boats. Yeah. Where did you get jump in the water and drown? Do you want to come up and see this boat go? <laughs> yeah. Right, well then you'll have to sit on the wall with Daddy quietly. There was a lot of, oh, Daddy, Daddy, can I go on the boat, please, Daddy? How, how old was I? About 18. No. <laughs> um, you were, I think you were four, maybe? Four or five. <laughs> Four or five. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's you're making it sound like I'm a weirdo for liking boats. No, Most four or five year olds like boats, and, and I pointed and, the boat. And, and I wanted down to see the, the, boat. the the thing of it all, the thing that boats put to get onto the shore. The gangplank. Gangplank, exactly. Came this very suave man who looked like he was doing an ad for Virgin Atlantic. You know, he was wearing sort of white suit and a pink cap and all this and sort of badges all over him. Yeah. And he came down, he said, oh, hi, guys, uh, what's your name? And hi, little boy, and Mr. and Mrs. And I said, why, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Whitehall, and, and Jack, it's so lovely to see you. And uh, would you like to come and have a look around the boat? And I, and I thought, well, that's a very nice offer for a very nice man. Yeah. So we said, yes, that would be lovely. Hillary thought it would be a really nice thing to do, go in and maybe have a, a cool drink or something like that. So we walk onto this boat and, and it's full of sort of very glamorous looking people. There are sort of women going up and down the steps, stairs, going up to this top bit. Um, and they've all got some clipboards and they're all very beautifully dressed and everything. And we're ushered into this sort of ante room and you have a drink. You say, could I have a barley water, please? Or something like that. I did not talk like that at you any did. point during my life. You did, you had a lisp. Please don't get up there, please. Well, you'll have to wait till Daddy comes, Sally. Jack! Jack! Okay, I did actually have a lisp for a bit, but. Tiny lisp. A little lisp. It was caused by the. I cut a royal teeth, it came out like that. And then the minute we had them fixed, and that was right. a cheap operation, I can yes. tell you. But you're making yeah. me sound like some weird little, like, golem child with, like, drooling and lisps and, like, pointing at the boat. You're making me sound <laughs> much weirder than I was. I was obviously yeah. quite an eccentric child. Yeah. But you're no, making, no, you're you painting were... a picture of me that is not fair. No, no, you were this, sweet. This horrible, like, hideous, it was on, like, some kind of leash were you dragging me along. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get me. Yeah, yeah. You, were the very boat. Sweet. Oh, you were very oh, sweet. You were very sweet. No, you were very sweet, little boy. And, and anyway, so we're now in this um, the, sort of ante room. This room, and, and then one of the was ladies. I, I, and I've got a drink. Was I yes. able to drink the drink? <laughs> I presumably I had to have a straw, no. and you'd tape the cup to my hands. No, they, so that I could have it there. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> and, or was there space? to get the straw into the visor of the helmet that I was wearing at the time. So, one of these glamorous ladies came in and uh, gave you biscuits and stuff, yeah. you know, and drinks <laughs> and all that. And, she, and then another woman came in and asked whether we'd like to look round the boat. And I said, yes, that'd be lovely. 
and they said, well, we're just going to take Jack off to, <laughs> to find some toys and stuff. Because okay. we got a room where they had lots of toys and also for television. And, yeah. And he could watch some movies or whatever. Sort of like a pen almost they would put me in with yeah, the toys. They, they just took you off. You were very excited to go with them. Mm. He's two very glamorous women. They um, took me off and I was they in... They took you off. And presumably none of the toys could have anything too small in case I tried to... So they took you off to this room and then Mummy and I finished our tea. And tests. then the man said, would you like to have a, a, a tour around the, the boat? Yeah. And so we went for a little sort of mini tour around the boat. And then we got to the very top of the stairs and there was a huge sculpture of this man. And I said to the woman, um, oh yes, yeah, so that man out there, I'm like, who, who is he again? And she said, oh, he, he's, you'll see his name's down there, T. Dan Smith. And I said, that name rings a bell. But I just recognised the face on this sculpture. And then suddenly it all came to me in a great rush of blood. People going up and down the stairs, clipboards, people in uniforms. This was the Scientology boat. And then I thought of you, because all this... L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, yeah, not that's right. T. Yeah. Dan okay. Smith. L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, L. Ron Hubbard. And I realised then, Smith. just to show all this idea that I was horrible and you were deformed and all that, <laughs> I suddenly realised, where is my Jack? Where is my baby? And I was out, where's my son? Get my son back here immediately. And then he said, Oh, your son is watching movies. I know what movies he's watching. He's watching some pornographic movie about how wonderful your fucking Scientology thing is. Get him here now! Got you, but you came back. Right. Oh, thank hey, you guys. I was watching a nice film in there about all these people doing Scientology. Uh, I said, right, off the boat. And I was, you know, I've got Hillary together, got everything together, said goodbye to these people. No, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk to you anymore. We are getting off this boat. And we turn around to go off, and he then says, do you remember? No. And then to go to the toilet. <laughs> I thought, oh, fuck. So the girl said, oh, we can take him to a restroom. Jack, come with me, and you can go to a restroom. So he then went off to have a poo or a piss or whatever well, you were the, doing. The I way you painted me, you? presumably I didn't even need the restroom because I was probably in diapers, adult diapers. No. Like, just like when I need, I'm like Ruprecht <laughs> in Dirty Rotten yeah. Scoundrels. I need to go to the toilet and then I just go there. <laughs> no, it was nothing like that. You, so they took you off, at which point we had then had that embarrassing moment when you, if you have an argument with somebody and you say, well, you can't fuck this all, I don't have any more to do with it. And then they say, could you just hang on a minute, Michael, because that door's locked. We're going to have to unlock it for you. And you then stand there looking at the person that you've just told to go fuck themselves, saying, oh, well, hey, what are your afternoon plans and all that? Anyway, so it was a terrible man. Anyway, finally he comes back, having had his whatever he'd had, and then the woman by then thinks she'll have another go and says, are you sure you want to stay? I said, no, we are leaving now. And then the man who met us at the beginning and did all our, oh, oh, oh Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Whitehall and Jack, baby, baby Jack, it's so lovely to have you here. He was all very different then. He was, uh, okay, you want to go? You better go. Go on, go. Oh, go, go on, go. And, I said, right, thank you very much. Can't wait to get off this fucking boat. And down we went and off we went into Barbados. And it was a very, very depressing experience and very weird. Yeah. Very, very weird. Very weird. And I very don't think weird so. holiday and we never went back to Barbados. In fact, the following year we decided to go to Paris so that Daddy could introduce me to my... Um, my actual father, who um, worked in the bell tower of Notre Dame. T. Dan Smith. T. Dan Smith was actually a northern businessman who was a crook and who ended up in the Nick. Right. That's why I thought of him. But and I was thinking of, because he had L. T. Ron Dan Smart. As opposed to L. L. Ron, Ron Hubbard. 
be quite weird if they'd had a bust of T. Dan Smith, a northern businessman, on the Scientology boat, moored up in the Bahamas. Who is this? Oh, it's the bust we got done of a northern businessman. Right, but it was a simple mistake. Anyway, that's the story of us getting trapped on a Scientology boat with these weird people. Don't stop calling them weird. You know how scary Scientologists are. If anyone from the Scientology community sees this, you're probably going to have someone waiting outside the house, like, filming you. Yeah, I've seen the documentaries, so I would probably apologise. Okay, I'm sorry. You weren't that weird. (laughs) Just a bit weird. Bye, Bye, Jack. Bye. Bye. Goodbye to the ship.